Hi, my name is Nigel Griffiths, I work in Power Systems Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In this second HMC 8.2 movie, we'll be looking at the new graphical user interface and virtual machine properties and dynamic virtual machine changes. Okay, back on my HMC, we're in the default all systems view. I've got an L path I want to have a look at, or a virtual machine, and um, we're using a lot of live partition mobility at the moment. And it could be on the Ruby machine, but it could be on Emerald, or it could be on one of these uh, other machines. I'm not actually sure. I don't really want to go searching around for my L part. That seems a bit strange. If we look up in here, this is uh, all the systems, uh, the computers, partitions, 48 of them. All right, so this is a view that gives me all the partitions, but then I've got loads and loads of them to go looking through to find my one. But, oh, look, filter up here. Let's put in VM39. Wow, straight there. And it's telling me it's on the Ruby machine. So, wow, this is good information already. Now I want to uh, drill in to have a look at this logical partition. I've got some questions I want to ask. Um, it actually said below that that it's um, six CPU cores and 128 gigabytes of memory. So let this come up. And so here we have the full name, uh, Linux and AX, of course. Ah, see, look at this. This has got um, uh, technology levels missing in here. This is quite nice. This is um, how to switch on the uh, LED on the front of the uh, machine. Um, all I have to do is, is move that over there, and it's flashing away now. I can go and uh, find it in the computer room easy enough, or put it back. Wow, that's really quick, isn't it? And uh, we've got a normal boot and a uh, key position in here. I can switch uh, on and off this suspend resume uh, remote restart uh, feature directly here. This is a lot easier than uh, drilling down into the little menus in the classic view. Right, this is the uh, general. If I go and look at the uh, processor details, we'll let those come up. Okay, this is where a bigger screen would uh, help a little bit. If we um, scroll down slightly uh, here, it's in shared CPU. I've only got a default pull on this uh, big machine. I should try them. Um, so I guess because of the default pull, it's not showing me how many is left because it's all of them. Um, we've got 64. And I can uh, change from capped to uncapped. Of course, you can't do that live. Um, it will presumably tell you that. Actually, if I change it, it will say uh, save up here. Then I'll have to go and save that for the next time I uh, reboot. Um, one little thing in here. Oh, there's a weight factor in here because it's uh, uncapped, but there's a field missing here. Now, this pins field is allowing you to put uh, your favorite uh, views in here that you always want to switch to. Maybe your big database or your big web server or something. Um, but if we got a little arrow here, difficult to see, it's grey on grey. If we click that, it'll move it out of the way. There we go, there's the weight factor. So again, I could change that dynamically on the fly. We have the, the virtual processors um, in the classic version. Uh, we call that the uh, the virtual processors. Uh, the processing units is what we uh, are, the, if you like, the units we use for the entitlement. I got used to using an E or entitlement, but that's what that's about. You can tell the difference because this is a whole number and this is a fraction of a number. This is the amount of CPU time is allowed or guaranteed will be available. If the VP number is a bit high, you see they're both six, so this one can't use its uncapped feature because it can't get above the six it's entitled to. But if I wanted to change that, I could just drag that up a few. And uh, it's saying up here, make sure I want to save it. It's gone dark blue. If I try to move off this panel, it would actually uh, warn me about that. I was experimenting with this earlier. If I actually take the virtual processor down below uh, the 6, uh, 6, 6 here, and if I take it down to 5, it's automatically adjusting the uh, processing units because this can't be lower than the match actual number of virtual processors around. You can't guarantee you get uh, 10 CPUs, but only allow it to see seven. Um, so that's quite a good move. I'll just put that back. Yeah. Okay, six and um, six. Okay, if I made changes, it asked me to save them. And if possible, it will do a dynamic change onto the machine at the same time. I haven't looked into this advanced feature, but let's go and have a look at the uh, memory numbers. Okay, so this is assigned 128 gigabytes of memory. It's not a big, particularly big um, LPAR. I've got four terabytes in my machine. I've only got a couple of LPARs running at the moment, so I'm only uh, using uh, well under a terabyte uh, at the moment. It seems a bit of a shame. Uh, dedicated uh, memory for this. We're not using the uh, AMS. 
the active memory sharing features to uh, move memory between LPARs. Um, so we've got dedicated or dedicated. This is interesting when it says gigabytes, so this is what these numbers are reported to uh, in here. Um, if I change that to megabytes, it gives me a little, whoa! The value should be a, a multiple of your LMB, logical block memory size. Now, that is usually a lot less than a gigabyte. So if we're using gigabytes uh, here, then I'll always be a multiple of the LMB size. But now we're in megabytes, I've got to make sure this is uh, a multiple of my LMB size. And uh, in my case, that's 128. So I actually prefer using gigabytes. That's as much accuracy as I need. Uh, these days, you don't get an awful lot in a gigabyte these days, do you? OK, let's have a look at our physical I.O. adapters. And we will find there is none. We use pure virtual on our big machines these days. OK, no physical adapters. I can go and add an adapter. And then it gives me the classic uh, view of a uh, great big uh, part number designations of which uh, adapter slot they're in. And uh, we can go and find those and click on those and add them in. I won't go mucking about with this because I've actually got some guys from Lab Services uh, running benchmarks on my LPAR. So I don't want to actually change anything. Now I've worked out that we need to put a technology level in. Look at our virtual networks. Okay, um, that isn't displayed particularly nicely. Can we get it to re-display that? Oh, nearly. <laughs> okay, uh, this is just saying I got one VLAN in here. Um, uh, no, can't get that dis display properly. Let's stretch my window down a bit. Nope, that doesn't help either. Okay, well that worked uh, two minutes ago, but not now. Okay. Let's look at our virtual storage. This will be interesting because we're using shared storage pools. So what does the HMC think is going on? Okay. Physical uh, volumes, uh, none. Shared storage pools. Okay, so we actually have uh, a number of these and uh, we don't have any logical volumes. Uh, presumably that means um, from the... Um, virtual I.O. server, logical volume from there. Um, so this looks right. Yes, this does look right. This has uh, been... Um, the LPAR was created using PowerVC. And uh, we can see great big part numbers on here. Not particularly nice. But here's the boot volume group, uh, 32 gig. And it's in the shared storage pool called Globular. That's all right. Thin provisioning, that's true, right? And then we gave it two extra uh, volumes for the, uh, the databases that they're using here. And we slide across, um, you can see, yep, we're connected to the two Ruby VIO servers. So this all looks really good. Of course, there's other things about shared storage pools in the uh, HMC uh, new interface. Um, but we'll look at those some other time. Uh, we've got hardware virtualization as well. Well, we're not using any of there. Let's just see what it says. Yep, here's the SIOV. None at all. Okay. Well, we don't have any of those adapters in our machine, so that's okay. Well, that's a quick look around the properties of a virtual machine and how we could dynamically change them with a much nicer user interface. So I'll finish up with my blatant advert. You can find me here on Twitter, Mr. Enmon. Lots of my other movies in the YouTube.com Nigel A.R. Griffiths. I've got a blog, an expert blog, and don't forget those two virtual user groups for AIX and for Power Systems. Very useful places to go to get lots of information. Don't forget, if you like this movie, why not click on the light thumbs up button below.